Hey gang, holy crap. Yesterday was Star Trek's 50th birthday. It premiered 50 years ago yesterday. Set phasers for excitement. Uh, anywho, I, I think it's rather uh, serendipitous that today, the day after Star Trek's 50th anniversary, I am gonna go check out the uh, new documentary for the love of Spock. I have been and always shall be your friend. Rather interestingly, uh, a documentary directed by Leonard Nimoy's son about the life and times of the late, great Leonard Nimoy. How fitting is that? Fascinating. I'm getting the feels just thinking about it. <laughs> I should maybe preface this by saying that, you know, my Star Trek fandom uh, has not been a lifelong affair. I really was only introduced, I think, to Star Trek uh, in my final year of high school. During my last semester of grade 12, I had a first period spare, which afforded me the opportunity to stay up a little later the night before. And the CBC was airing Star Trek reruns every night at midnight. So. For the entirety of my final year in high school, I started watching the original series uh, in rerun form on the CBC. And at that particular point, I just fell completely in love uh, with the adventures of Captain Kirk, Bones McCoy, and of course, Mr. Spock. Yes, I believe no permanent damage was done. I'm just a huge fan of the original series, uh, born out of my first period spare in grade 12, and it's basically continued ever since. So anyway, I'm going to go check out this uh, documentary, and I'll be back with the review. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> A most fascinating thing happened. Uh, a very interesting thing happened to me uh, on the way downtown to the cinema. I uh, discovered that For the Love of Spock is actually playing on video on demand. So as opposed to making a 22 kilometer round trip downtown uh, to the theater, I decided to stay home. I'm going to check out this puppy uh, on the old home theater. And once again, I will be back with a review. Please, Spock, do me a favor and don't say it's fascinating. No. But it is interesting. Hey gang, uh, I just finished watching For the Love of Spock, a truly absorbing and enthralling and actually surprisingly touching and moving uh, Kickstarter funded uh, biography slash documentary, of course, about the late great Leonard Nimoy. I really enjoyed watching this movie at home <laughs> uh, with my brother. My older brother, Kevin, is a, you know probably as big of a Star Trek fan as I am of the original series, if not more. And so it, watching the documentary had a very uh, kind of, a, I guess, a, a shared uh, personal significant, significance for both of us because we both sort of uh, grew up watching Star Trek a little bit more with him, because uh, obviously, as I alluded to earlier, I became a Star Trek fan a little bit later in life. But for those who are really sort of unfamiliar with this documentary, um, I mean, it was obviously, it was released to coincide with the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. And um, Adam Nimoy, who is uh, Leonard Nimoy's son, and actually, as I learned in the documentary, at, at points uh, in both of their respective lives, he, he was his rather estranged son. And the documentary was originally planned to focus uh, specifically on the uh, Star Trek's uh, Mr. Spock and uh, his indelible mark that he left on pop culture as a whole. But then unfortunately when his father died in 2015, um, Adam realized that he had to expand the scope of this documentary to really be about not only uh, the Spock character, but also his father's uh, illustrious career as a whole. In November of last year, I approached Dad about the idea of doing a documentary on Spock as a part of the celebration of the anniversary of the original series. And the minute I suggested this to Dad, he was in. We learned through the documentary, it was certainly a career of uh, ups and downs. 
started acting about eight years old and suddenly decided that I liked it enough to want to make a career of it. So I came to California in 1949. I guess it's a traditional Talking Heads documentary. I mean, it really doesn't push the envelope of what the genre is, nor is it really trying to be. Much of it is actually narrated by Nimoy himself. Um, and I read that he really jumped at the opportunity to work on this film when he was alive. And you learn through the documentary that they actually did work together, uh, I, I guess co-directing, producing an old episode of The Outer Limits from a decade ago. So that was really fascinating. And for the most part, I found the documentary to be very lively, uh, very, uh, very, very funny at times. And um, a lot of the hilarity oftentimes comes from the collection of Talking Head interviews it has from not only fans, but actors. Um, it interviews uh, most of the uh, Star Trek, uh, the key Star Trek cast members, as well as a cast of the new J.J. Uh, Abrams produced reboot series. It also in interviews people like Niels deGrasse Tyson, as well as it has some touching interviews with some NASA employees who really come out and say, uh, how the character of Star uh, Spock and Star Trek as a whole really influenced their uh, decision to pursue a career in science. And I thought that was uh, quite poignant. You made the world stand up and listen. And the film really chronicles uh, Nimoy's life uh, very, from his very humblest beginnings as an actor. Uh, he has a very humorous anecdote at one point where he uh, talks about coming from uh, from Boston to Hollywood and the way he looked and the way he dressed, I think he said uh, uh, that he thought that people from Hollywood must have thought that I looked like I just got off a boat from Transylvania. <laughs> uh, so that was really funny. Uh, but nevertheless, it sort of chronicles his ability and his yearning to get steady work. And he did get steady work in a lot of bit parts, but uh, to his own admission, he never got a role and a part that lasted more than a few weeks for uh, some meager pay. And Prior to Star Trek, I never had a job that lasted longer than two weeks. Never. Two weeks. And of course, it chronicles um, him being cast as Mr. Spock and how that fundamentally altered his life and all of our lives in so many ways. Yeah, it started happening very fast, and uh, I'll show you how naive I was. At that time, I still had my phone listed in the phone book and my address, and it was all, you know, I'd never dreamed that there was going to be any, that kind of impact, because I'd been on television before, mm -hmm. and movies before, and I was listed in the phone book. It didn't matter to me. And then, of course, it really goes on to talk about his uh, post-Star Trek career, and a lot of people seem to forget that he was a regular on Mission Impossible, the TV series. He also did that really cool In Search Of show, and I still have memories watching reruns of that as a child. Um, and of course, it, you know, Nimoy provides a running commentary uh, about the ups and downs of his post-Star Trek career. And um, it's really interesting where it dives into um, all the uh, financial woes he had with Paramount when Paramount was still using his image to sell Star Trek and to sell the Spock character without his permission and his legal permission. And that was one of the things that really held him back from first appearing in the very first Star Trek film in the late 70s. And uh, he ended up using that as leverage to get basically in the film and also to get leverage to uh, direct subsequent Star Trek films like Star Trek The Voyage Home and also uh, Star Trek III. And a lot of people also seem to forget that he had a post-Star Trek directorial career. He also directed uh, Three Men and a Baby. And, you know, it's um, he was a, a jack of all trades. Like He was an accomplished, uh, you know, uh, movie actor. He also did Invasion of the Body Snatchers, probably the best Invasion of the Body Snatchers film ever committed to celluloid, the one directed by Philip Kaufman. He also uh, was a, a very um, prominent stage actor, a lot of things. These are a lot of little details that a lot of people just don't really understand about Nimoy himself. Well, it was a self-made renaissance man. The film is also laced with some hysterical moments, such as one that just has to be seen to be believed, where uh, Nimoy is in this music video and singing the Ballad of Bilbo Baggins, and it is cringe-inducingly awful, yet so funny to sit through. You know, last but not least, like the documentary really has this underlying sense of deep melancholy about it because uh, Adam uh, Nimoy basically comes out and say to say that you know everyone has this picture of his father and of the Spock character but what a lot of people don't realize is that unfortunately Nimoy put a prominence on his career which unfortunately had rather negative side effects on on his uh, family life and he turned to uh, 
uh, alcohol and alcoholism sort of plagued him throughout most of his, uh, his life leading up into his death. He was trying so hard to get this career going. It took a toll on his family life. That really read, led to the estrangement between Adam and his father. And this might be one of the very few documentaries where we actually get to see the director being frequently interviewed and in a very frank and emotional manner. And I think that's what made the film so ultimately touching. It's that intimate, personal connection that the director has with this material that's uh, undeniable. People ask me what it was like living with Spock. And for the most part during that period, he'd come home at night, eat his dinner, memorize his lines, and then just go to sleep. And one of the most powerful things about the documentary is uh, this letter that Nimoy wrote to his son when they were pretty much at their absolute wit's end in terms of having a meaningful uh, father-son relationship. And uh, the letter is narrated uh, through various parts of the film, and it's just, it's so undeniably uh, heartbreaking, yet uplifting to see that included in the film, because it, sh it shows that Nimoy was a man who admitted that he did have demons, and he was trying to uh, rectify his life for the better at a late stage in his career uh, to really uh, sort of mend some of those fragmented ties that he had with his family. All in all, uh, if you're a Star Trek fan, and if you are a fan of Leonard Nimoy, like I certainly am, and a fan of Star Trek, like watching this documentary seems like an absolute no-brainer. Um, Nimoy and Spock were always my favorite attractions uh, from the old Star Trek TV series, mostly because Spock, to me, uh, felt like the most inviting character. That seems kind of odd because he played such an emotionless, robotic character, but there was just something about him and the way he sort of uh, had this always this internal conflict between subverting his emotions while trying to be uh, cold-hearted and ad analytical and it always provided really good conflict on the show and I think that's why I ultimately found the Spock character so utterly compelling and he's still my favorite to this day and actually an unintentional and maybe intentional source of a lot of the humor on the old Star Trek series. Believe me, you couldn't sell fake patents to your mother. I failed to understand why I should care to induce my mother to purchase falsified patents. It, it's it's must-see material, and it's playing on video on demand on various channels right now. I'm not sure if it's getting like a wide theatrical distribution because it, it's playing for a limited run here at the Roxy Cinema in Saskatoon. Uh, but if you can catch it on in a cinema or on video on demand, you should definitely check this documentary out. It's fantastic. I think people recognize themselves in him. One of the things that I you know, really respect about um, your dad was his love and affection for the fans. There you go. There's my review of For the Love of Spock. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the documentary, if you saw it. Also, let me know in the comments below what you thought of Leonard Nimoy, uh, of his career, what your favorite Star Trek films are as well. If you could hit that like button, I'd appreciate it. If you could hit the subscribe button at below, that would also mean the world to me. Thank you very much for watching. Live long and prosper, and I'll see you at the movies, everybody. First word that does come to mind is loving. Love. It's definitely just love.